Well, hello everyone. In the last video, I showed you what ace.js is and how to integrate it with your project in a step-by-step -step fashion. Now in this video, I am simply going to go over all those steps in a much quicker way to integrate ace.js text editor inside of our editor container div. And then we are also going to work on the widgets container and from the next video onwards, we are going to start off with the programming part. So let's start. First of all, I'm going to launch our project and head over to official ace.js website and go to this tab called embedding guide. In the previous video, I showed you how to get all the dependencies and utilize the code given here. So I'm not going to go over all that again. And if you're new to ace.js and haven't seen the previous video, then I strongly recommend you to first watch that video. All right. So just like last time, I'm going to copy the style from here and go over to VS code and paste the copied segment of code here instead of code editor.html. Now I'm going to copy these four lines of code, which are responsible for actually defining our code editor inside of the DOM and paste those lines inside of editor container div as that dev acts as a container for our editor. And then I'm going to copy the script tag right here and paste it right at the bottom of our code editor.html just like that. All right, let's reload. Oof, what happened there? We have that single line and nothing else. Well, of course, we haven't included any dependencies. So in the last video, we got all the dependencies from the GitHub repository linked in the ace.js website. Let me quickly just show it to you. So here, if you just click on the ace builds link, you're going to be taken to a GitHub repo. And if you have watched the previous video, you might already know how to find what you're looking for. Anyway, moving on, I already have the ace.js dependency. And I also have a mode dependency, which basically tells Ace that in what language do you want the code to be highlighted in. And also right here, you can also see that I have a theme dependency, which allows me to add some theme to our editor. So here I have a twilight one. So I'm going to go back to codeeditor.html and link them all here, just like that. So now let's reload. And there we go. You can see that the given text is indeed highlighted in JavaScript, but there are two problems. First is that we don't have a theme applied here and second it covers the entire screen which is bad. So let's start with the first issue. Go to codeeditor.html and we would need to change the argument which is being passed into the set theme function right here as the theme dependency that we have is for twilight theme. So let's change this from monokai to twilight. You should see the desired theme applied on the code editor now. Moving on to the second issue, if you look at the CSS applied to our editor, we can see that it says position absolute. So it means that the element onto which position absolute is applied positions itself at the top left corner of the screen without any regard to any other elements. And that's not what we want. So we're going to set it to relative. All right, now reload the project again. Wow, now we don't have anything on the screen. So uh, actually we do have something on the screen, but we don't have anything new on the screen. So I'm going to go over to snippet styles.css and give some property to our editor container div because up until now it doesn't know how to handle elements inside of it. So create a class dot editor container and I'm going to set it to display grid and grid template columns to 1fr. Now reload the project and there we go. We have our code editor with us present right where we wanted it to be. You can play around, write some demo code and test the code highlighting out. Now I'm going to implement the status bar below our code editor. As if we have a look at the finished version right here, notice on the bottom we have this bar which shows the current language that we are working with. And a lot of other things can be implemented here such as counting words and columns etc. So if you look into its code here, as soon as I expand the editor container div, you can see that we have two different children here. First one is the editor that we just implemented and the second one represents the bar. And I have given it a class of code stat. And if I expand that, you can see that inside of code stat, we have something called current lang, which contains the current language. So let's build that quickly. Instead of the editor container, I'm going to create a div and give it a class code stat. And instead of code stat, I'm going to create a div with a class current lang. So if you reload, you can see that a little bar does appear at the bottom of the screen. Also, right now, this bottom bar or status bar is not the part of our editor container div, which it should be. Why? Well, it would become more clear in further videos as we move into programming part. So I'm going to go over to the editor container and append auto after 1fr just like that. Hope you get what I'm doing here. So now our editor container can expect two rows. First one covers the entire space and contains our code editor, whereas the other one takes as much little space as possible and contains the status bar. We've done these things a lot of times by now. All right. 
Let's quickly give them some styles. So I'm going to target this div with a class code stat, give it some border top of maybe one pixel solid and I'm going to give it a color 2D3239, font size 8PT, color 2 white, background 141517, font family, century gothic and text transform to uppercase because we want uh, all of the languages to be appearing as uppercase. Alright, and then I'm going to target current lang and set its float to right, set its width to fit content, padding to 7 pixel, border left 1 pixel solid 2D3239. Now reload the project and there we go, we have our beautiful status bar. You can alter its padding and stuff to make it look more appealing or do whatever you wish to do with it. Okay, so we are done with the first part. Now I'm going to write the code for our right panel. You can see that in the finished version of the app, we have this right panel that contains a cross icon and then below it, we have some icons of popular sites such as Tag Overflow, Font Awesome, GitHub and CDNJS. So how can I do that? Well, first I'm going to go back to codeeditor.html and write some basic skeleton content for it. I'm going to start off by creating a div and giving it a class widgets drawer and instead of this widgets drawer, I'm going to create another div with a class widgets header this will basically act as a container for the heading so optionally we can give some heading as well right now i'm just going to give a cross just like that and just below it i'm going to give four different buttons just like that and each button has its own id representing what symbol it's going to be bearing okay so now let's reload and see what do we have all right there we go we have our basic skeleton now i'm going to head over to css and style these buttons. So first I'm going to target dot widgets drawer button. In this way I'm going to target all four of the buttons at the same time. I'm going to set display to block, height 30 pixel, width 35, margin bottom 15 pixel, set its cursor to pointer, border, give it a border of 2 pixel, solid, transparent and outline to 0. Okay and then I'm also going to give some hover effect. So just like that I'm going to give some hover effect and uh, when we move our mouse over any one of these buttons what's going to happen is it i'm going to just alter its box shadow property just like that just copy the same code and then you can play around with it and now i'm going to target each one of those buttons individually remember all of those buttons had ids as an identifier so in the css i'm just going to write hashtag stack overflow uh, because this was the this basically represents the button with an id stack overflow Give it a background URL and this address 50% 50% no repeat and background size set its background size to cover and I'm going to do the same thing for font awesome as well just set its background to the corresponding logo 50% 50% no repeat background size to cover by the way all these images are present at my github repo just click on the link below and select the branch which corresponds to this video I'm also going to show you all that just at the end of the video you can directly navigate to the image folder and download the files as required you can also cross check the code that we wrote so far. Alright, moving on, I'm going to do the same thing for git and cdnjs, just like that. Now let's reload the project and there we go, we have our right panel as well. Of course, a lot of things look ugly and nothing works, but don't worry, we're going to have our very own code editor real soon, just keep supporting. So that's it for this video and to get the source code you could either just go to the link below or go to github from a new tab and search for snippets-electron-js, open the repository and select this branch that says part 8 as it hosts all the code from this video and then just download the entire code or browse to whichever parts you like. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new or if you're following the series which I guess you are then I hope everything that I showed works well with your project as well and you understood everything that I explained and did here. If there are any doubts then please comment and keep on supporting. Also if you're new you know the drill like the video and subscribe to the channel and thank you.